he's gone to prepare and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and i shall feast at the table spread for me surely goodness and mercy shall Say amen to that. Amen. Only trust him. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word only trust him only trust him only trust him now and he will save you he will save you he will save you now yes jesus is the truth the way that leads you into rest believe in him without delay and you are fully blessed and only trust him only trust him only trust him now and he will save you he will save you he will save you now Amen. Pray with us, please. Father, we, we love you. And we do want you to be glorified, Lord, in us and in our church. Lord, in the things that we say, the things we do, the places we go, the people we see. God, we just, we love you. We lift you up. We pray that your, your very name will be lifted up today. That, God, that we will give you the praise and you will honor. Lord, Pastor Randy spoke of so many prayer requests this morning. Lord, we don't want to forget to pray for these, Lord, for your holy hand. 
your holy hand of mercy and grace, God. Lord, where, where the enemy death has come, God, just lift them up and touch them, Lord. God, we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for the beautiful music. Sean was going to preach tonight, and I was going to preach next week. It turned out we flip-flopped around. This is a message I was going to preach next Sunday night at Walton Union, so I don't have everything that I want to, so it's just hard to tell where, where my mind will go as we move through this. But turn to 1 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. 1 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. I do appreciate your being here, those that are listening by the airwaves. I appreciate the folks down at... Uh, First Church, and just pray blessings upon that service and that meal tonight that, that people would come to the Lord through their efforts. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a bit like Pastor Randy. I don't do mu- know much about exercise. I don't do much about physical training. But I'm going to try to preach a little bit about that tonight and how it relates to the gospel. So I had to call a couple people. I had to go back from memory and, and, and the said would be perseverance, steadfastness, and Christian growth. Perseverance, steadfastness, and Christian growth. The exact growth, the exact title would be exercising godliness. And, 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 and you know, throughout our, our careers, and as many of you know, my wife and I were both military, and they expected to get out and do push-ups and sit-ups and run and take a physical training test and, and all that stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I never was very good at that. And to be even more honest with you, I didn't like anything to do with it. It hurt. I've never seen anybody running that's run a long way smiling when they get through. I've never seen anybody smiling when they lift weights. They're just going, ooh, like that. So, again, don't know a lot about what I'm talking about. But the truths that apply, apply to physical exercise will apply to spiritual exercise as well. And, and I've heard different sermons in this line, never one quite like this. And these truths are readiness. Repetition, resistance, and resolution. And, and I want us just to understand how we can tie these together. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Now remember, Paul here is, is talking to Timothy, trying to encourage Timothy and teach him how to how to preach and what to preach. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast a taste. And you're, you're moving along pretty good here, Timothy. Verse 7, But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. The book of 1 Timothy here is about Paul giving Timothy instruction on how men ought to behave themselves in the church. And I guess I'm a little old-fashioned, but I think men should, should set the example. Not taking the thing away from women at all, but according to the Bible, men should take the example. I'm afraid today that a lot of men have shunned for that. Often men don't even come to church. And through the ages, that has, has been the case. The case. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15 says, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is in the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. And Timothy, you, you just need to take care of yourself and do the things that you know are right as it pertains to the church. And these instructions, he gives him very specific instruction on how he ought to conduct his affairs at will. Uh, I won't go there yet. He warns Timothy about making sure he doesn't give heed to fables, but that he preaches the truth. You know, and, and this fables things and false teachers, all of us need to be careful, but particularly our pastors. And we don't need to preach like, like somebody else does. I, I love to hear Pastor Randy preach, and I told him, I wish I could preach like him, and wish I could preach like this one and preach like but I can't. And you know what? It's okay. I just deal with what God has given me and trust the Holy Spirit for the rest. But so many times when you listen to men and put men up here somewhere, they're telling you fables or telling you falsities or not telling you just the way that it is. He's telling Timothy, 
Get into the word. He tells to bring to mind those, these things to those he ministers. And to be a pastor, in my opinion, is an awesome responsibility. And it is not one of these, these seven to four jobs or whatever they are and everything. Often you don't get a lunch break. You don't get to get home when you want to. You don't get to eat your meals when you want to. But it's so rewarding in so many ways. As we think about the pastors, and I saw Susan here, we don't want to forget the pastor's wife. And he tells him he'll do these things, and I read them to you, that he'll be a good minister. And anybody that's called to preach surely wants to be a good minister. And instead of giving heed to the fable, he's exercised himself in godliness. Now, I have to tell you a story before we got start, before we really get started. We, we used to go out and would run at lunchtime, and the army was over at Coonskin Park. You got the front door before they put the gate, and you could run down the park and run back. And all those people, they'd get out there and then run. I was running with a man named Colonel Young. Colonel Young's not doing well today, and his mind's not as good as it was. Great friend of mine. He and I would just get out. And we'd put on our running shorts and our running shirts, and we'd spring a little bit of water on our shirts. So it looked like we'd run a whole... Who laughed? So it looked like we'd run a whole way. We, we didn't run very far because we went down that first curve. And you'd go over there just a little piece and the people running wouldn't see you. We'd take off our shirt and we'd lay in the sun for 30 minutes and we'd jog back. We couldn't run a bit further when we got through. We had a nice suntan. That's how much, how much I liked it. Paul compares this physical exercise to spiritual exercise. And he says physical exercise profits little as far as spirituality goes. Now it profits to our bodies and we'll talk about that. But spiritual exercise prophets in all things. And I think that goes to the, to the church also. Some of you maybe have done all this, this physical and bodily exercise. Cindy, Cindy loved to run. And she convinced me that it was okay to run. I don't know how she did it. We used to run down on the boulevard. And when we started, I would run about a quarter of a mile. I thought I was doing pretty good. She'd go on down the road, pitch, how far did you go today? Five miles. Three times a week. And I'm saying, this is not, this is not good. I don't like this. I could just see Randy left and run right along with me, you know. And, 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 and it just was not much fun. But as I, as I exercised more, and I'll explain why I'm telling you this as time goes on tonight, as I ran more, I got to where I could run further. Now, I did get bit by a dog one time. I almost got hit by a car. And I didn't see much fun in that kind of stuff. But I got to where I was running five miles with, and I did that for probably a month. And I'm thinking, why in the world am I doing this? And I quit. Shame on me. I just didn't get anything out. Some, some people do. The same principles, again, apply physically as spiritually. Let's talk about those. In order to exercise, you've got to be ready to exercise. You have to make up your mind to exercise. One of the reasons that, that I didn't like it, I wasn't ready to. Didn't want anything to do with it. I wanted to go in and do my job, work my computers, lead the people, do the stuff that I was supposed to do. I didn't want to exercise. It hurt. It sweat. It just didn't make much sense to me. I didn't have time for it. So I didn't have a mindset, if you will, to do it. I never made, up, made the decision in my mind that I wanted to be strong and muscular. The muscles you see are natural. Thank you. Y'all get this. That's good tonight. And, and then there's got to be a willingness to begin. Now, I thought the willingness to begin was going to buy me a pair of nice shorts and good expensive running shoes and some socks that were really good and, and a T-shirt that was good and, and some sunglasses, you know, so they could look cool. And I had all that stuff. So, so I made the, the willingness, except for one thing, I never got off my chair to really get out and do it. And there's got to be a desire to act. I had to have a desire to get up out of my chair. I found every excuse. I was so glad sometimes when we would we, take lunch at 1130. My phone sometimes ring at 1130, maybe because I had some people call me then, and I had to work through lunch or something big would come up. I never really had that desire to act on it. And spiritually speaking, many people do the same thing. And that concerns me today. It concerns me that, that we've lost that desire to get out and spiritually exercise for us and for God. And, and Randy just almost alluded to all this this morning. Oh, but there's got to be a decision to, of the mind. And 1 Peter 1.13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace 
that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, set your mind to do these things. Spiritually, we need to set our mind, that's what Peter's saying here, to do the things of God. People, people have, and then, you know, we, we say COVID caused it and this and that. People just aren't rounded enough in what they're doing to reach out and do it. Now, that, that's hard and that's cold, but that's simply the way some people can't get out. Some people just can't get out and go to church, and I get that. But some people are just downright lazy. That scares me. It scares me. Consider 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Put him first. Set him apart. And be always ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. No, we need to set our mind that we can tell people why we believe in Jesus, what Jesus has done for us. You know, we need to have a testimony all the time. And, and if we're, we haven't set our mind or we haven't purposed to the things of God, we can't set our mind and we don't have a ready answer. I, I about go goofy when people say, I, I, I don't know anything to tell people about Jesus. Tell them about how he saved you. I can spend hours, hours doing that, how my heathen saved by grace. And the Holy Spirit will take, will take care of the rest of it. We've got to have a readiness of mind if we're going to practice spiritual exercise. In other words, we've got to have our mindset to do it. One of the reasons I didn't do that physical PT stuff, even hurts me to say it, I didn't want to. I didn't have a mindset to do it. For the things we purpose to do with our minds, normally we do. Somebody say Amen. If I set my mind, I want to do something, most of the time I do. Most of the time you do. Amen? So, so that makes me think that a lot of people that aren't doing don't have their mindset to do for God. Everybody tracking with me? Now, I'm not talking to you all night. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a mindset to do it. So go tell everybody, everybody else what I'm saying. There's got to be this willingness to forgive. Paul had a great attitude in Romans 1.15. So as much as in me, as much as I am, as much as I can, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He was ready to go out and preach. He had a mindset to do the things, a willingness to begin. And in other words, when, when, when you're called to do something, you've got to have a willingness to do it. I made some statements way too many times and, and just about every place I preach, it seems like that, that it's so difficult anymore to find teachers and, and people that are going to, even preachers. And a lot of people say, I want to do this and I want to do that, but they don't. There's got to be a willingness. The attitude of the Bereans in Acts 17, 11, those were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and they received the word with all readiness of mind, searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. I, I get it. I'll put it in my coat pocket. I, you, can, you, can read, you can read the scripture on a cell phone. You can read it on an iPad. There is nothing wrong with that. I've heard some people say, I don't want somebody sitting in my church reading a, reading a scripture on the iPad. Why not? What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with it. Amen? But you've got to read it. I shared with some of you before, and, and, and I don't want to be overly repetitive, but, but the hardest course I ever took in seminary was Isaiah. And Isaiah was written in past tense and present tense and future tense and future perfect tense, and I didn't know one tense from the other. I wasn't very, very schooled when I, when I started studying in these kind of things, and, and, and I, I really was struggling to have a C in that course. I'd done pretty good in all my other courses, and, and really... I thought I was working hard, and it come up to the final time. And most of the time, everything was essay. But this is going to be an objective of 50 questions plus, I think it's five questions essay. It comes up to the night before the test. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to fail this thing. I'm going to fail it. You know how our minds get? I'm going to fail it. I'm going to fail it. And finally, I just got, got aggravated, and I put that big old book, the big old thick book, I put that book of Isaiah under my pillow. So he said, Mike, what are you doing? I said, I'm hoping through osmosis I'll learn something tonight. That didn't work. I'm, I'm, she, after her, she'll tell you, I put Isaiah. I didn't do a thing. And God revealed to me I should have spent more time 
before the night of the test studying, and I wouldn't have had that dilemma. The same with us as believers. Before the test comes, we need to spend more time studying. All I got was a stiff neck. Oh, hurt me. Hurt me. There's got to be a desire to act. Once a decision is made, once we get our mindset, we got to be willing to do something about it. Amen? Wouldn't it be awful if on Wednesday nights that, that we know we're going to have these meals and, and we know somebody's going to have some and nobody fixed anything? You see, when you decide you're going to have them, somebody's got to do something about it. Now, what scares me today, a lot of those somebodies during the time of COVID has eased away and lost their mindset to be involved and even to come to church. I want to tell you, the, the scripture is so clear. We need to assemble ourselves together with the brethren, you and our brothers and sisters, amen. The word even goes far, so far as to say we're joint heirs with Christ. And we're to join ourselves together because we lift one another up. We grow when we're in the presence of one another. And often tell you, if you can't tell somebody at church that you love them, before church, you need to come up to the altar and mean it. John 13, 17. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I haven't shared a lot of this with a lot of people. I have my call to preach and Satan threw everything in the world at me. This, this reason you can't preach. You can't preach for this reason. All, look at all the things you've done. Look at all the place you've been. You're just nothing, paraphrasing, you're nothing but a heathen. And I, I really struggled with, with the call. Saying, God, you can't be talking to me. You're talking to somebody else down here and everything. But once I committed to the Lord, I was purposed to do everything that I could with his help, with his grace, with his assistance, whatever you need to do. I believe the Christian has an obligation to make up their mind they're going to serve God to the fullest they can. We need to be careful and not measure what my fullest is to your fullest to that person sitting next to you because we're all not alike. Too many people think, well, I do this. I think Rand, did, I believe Randy called them crusty old Christians this morning. I love that word. Crusty old Christians sometimes, I've never seen it here. Help me, Lord. I've, but, but sometimes when somebody new comes to church, when it's the first time that they've come in, maybe they come up to the altar, and maybe, maybe they're, they're just a, a little bit different, in, and maybe they don't know all the Christian ways. And they do something a little bit wrong. And sometimes those crusty old Christians want to take a cat of nine tails and whip them. We need to be lifting them up and show them God's love. For you see, one time I was one of them. And maybe some of you were too. I was saved late in my life. How about you? If you've been there, you understand what I'm talking about. We need to love them. And see, we need to nurture them and make disciples of them so they can go out and so they can win others. We have to have a mindset during, during COVID and after. We could just lay down and cry. Just, oh, man, woe is me. Look here, some folks haven't come back. What are you and I doing about it? Not, not the pastor's job. The way you're looking at me like... Get away from it, Mike. I'm not going to. It's our job to pray. It's our job to tell people. It's our job to invite people. So we talked about the desire to act. Now there's repetition. To, to, to exercise, you've you got to do repetitions. And I hear people talk about all the reps they can do. Now, the world I come from, a rep was a new person that joined the military that was going to go to basic training AIT. So for a long time, I didn't know what this was talking about. Short for repetition. And like... Boy, oh boy. I don't know, do they call these curls when you pull that thing back up? I don't know. When you lift those weights and thank you. I don't know. You're doing that thing with that weight and sometimes you do it both arms, sometimes with one. And you count how many you do. One, two, three, four. Or you do push-ups. I'd show you an example of that, but I do one and be flat on my face. You do push-ups. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, two. And, and that was how, how they measured them and everything. But we have to do the repetitions. I hear people sometimes say, and I believe it, that coming to church is a bit of a habit. I love getting up on Sunday morning and coming to church. Even if I'm not preaching, I love to be in church. I like to be with God's people. I want to be repetitive because I learn something every time I go. It's not about me. It's about praising the name of God. 
I learn something every time I go. Don't you? I kind of like that. Randy told me tonight when we got done that he and I'd have a contest to see who could do the most repetitions of push-ups. I'm kidding, he did not tell me that. Walking two steps is not exercise. For me to get up and go to the bathroom is not exercise. I asked my boss one time, I said, can you put me further away from the bathroom? He said, why? And I said, I want to walk more. Well, as I got older, I said, move me closer to the bathroom. But just to get up and make two steps, that's not exercise. To get up and go all the way with Jesus, the things that we learn, the things that we do, to keep on doing them, keep on exercise, that's repetitions of what we do. Repetition of going to Bible study, repetition of praying, repetition of God's word. What I was talking about a while ago, and I didn't, I didn't get totally done with it, it's, it's more than just casually carrying the Bible with you. It's reading the Bible. The media doesn't matter. Do we just utter one short prayer and call it devotion? I'm working on a message that may be just for me. You ever start to pray and get about 30 words out in your mind or out loud? And then your mind goes someplace else? That's a trick of Satan. And you ever say, Satan, get away from me? And he does. But he's pretty quick to come back. Isn't he? We've got to, through the repetition of prayer to ourselves, and when that comes, begin to, th- to think about things of God and, and, and change your mind from it and, and repeat, working on, say, God, help me. Get away, Satan, and get back to your prayer. And that may happen often, often a couple times in a minute. But the more that you push Satan away, the more he will go and leave you alone because he will know you're pleading the blood of Jesus and he can't get through the blood of Jesus. He can, he can, he can penetrate my feeble mind. He can get you all smart minds too. He can. But when we plead that blood, he ain't got a chance. And isn't it great that we're on Jesus' side? We're on the winning side, but we're part of God's army. And we need to exercise and we need to be strong. We need to be a mighty force. There's an enormous battle going on right now. And some of what's good and evil, I think it's God and Satan. And I think Satan ain't got enough sense to know he's going to lose. That was real good grammar, wasn't it? But it's going to lose. But we've got to be ready. We've got to be strong. Do you read, read just one verse and call it study? I was in a home one day, and I was, I was talking to them about, about their, their devotion. I think family devotion is a key to growing in the Lord. I think family devotion is a key to growing in the Lord. Somebody say amen so I can go on. Okay. And I, I was in this home, and we got to talk about their devotion. I was explaining to them how important the, the, the devotion life was, and particularly with your family, and particularly, I like eating. It could be any time and everything. And, I got, and they said, we, we pray, and we get together. Said, well, well, tell me about it. And they would have the TV on. That don't work. Now, I'm not saying TVs are bad. Randy said somebody preached it. I'm not saying TVs are bad. But there's a little button that says OFF. If you can't spell this off, we need to turn it off. When we're trying to get close to God, when we're trying to study. If you're on the phone, you need to turn the thing off. I will not let my TV be my God. And I pray that you don't. One brief verse is not study. Do we just come to one service a week and call ourselves faithful? I'll just leave that one alone. You just wait if you want to. Repetition is mentioned in the scriptures. Second Peter 1, 12 through 15, we read, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though we know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, know that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Let me change the subject. I just realized something. I can see to read this with my glasses off. Hallelujah. That's, that's God's work. I don't want to spend time with that's God's work. Got my, got my new glasses, got bifocals and trifocals. They don't have a line in them. 
I can, I can put it on and see y'all. It's kind of neat. I saw, I saw the choir when they were singing this morning and recognized them. That's pretty good. If I didn't know God, I couldn't call on him to do that. I think God gets the credit. Anyhow, Peter says he wouldn't be negligent. And, and you know, a ploy of Satan, I, I mentioned habits. And I think a lot of these things are, are, we build good habits into them. Brush my teeth is a habit, and it's a good thing, Amen. But I think that, that a lot of these things are habit. And what happens, maybe, maybe little Johnny or little Sally or, or grandson Timothy, I don't have any grandson named Timothy, my grandson Turtle, maybe he's got a ball game. And maybe I've got to be going at the time of the ball game. I go if I can. Nothing wrong with that. And, and say, well, I get home at 10 o'clock. That's just a little bit too late to have my devotions tonight. Tomorrow night, Super Bowl's on. Well, I have my devotions after the Super Bowl, and I'm about halfway give God just a little bit of time and go, doze off to sleep. You see, we're not practicing. We're not doing the repetitions that we ought to do. We're letting things come in front of God when that happens. And we dare not let things come in front of God. I'm pretty happy, I can see. I guess y'all noticed that. Jesus also implied repetition when he said, I can't see down this far. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Luke 9.23. Saying that, that just, just walk with me. And you, don't, you don't get to choose today or tomorrow or next week. When we choose Jesus, it's a daily, hourly, minute walk with him. It's not just pick and choose. I've shared with with. with this group a few times, we've kind of gotten with God like, like, like things of Christ are like microwave popcorn. In our world, everything's fast. Everything's quick. Everything's instant. We expect God to be fast. We expect him to be instant. I, I share with you, I love Oval Redenbacher, tender, tender white microwave popcorn. Open that popcorn pop or that microwave. I open that door. I put it in there. Oh, you got to squeeze it first to soften it up. I put it in there. I hit three and, and go. No, it automatically starts when I hit three. That, that starts heating up. Three minutes later, i got popcorn. I've got a Coca-Cola. I've gotten my hand out of the refrigerator. And, and, and that quick, I've got popcorn. God don't want us to use him like that. He wants to be with us 24-7, 365, and be our God that amount of time, not the other things that we make God. First Thessalonians 5.17, Paul says that we should pray without ceasing. And, you know, everybody likes to try to trick you on the Bible. People don't know a thing about the Bible. Don't you? What do you mean we've got to pray all the time when we're walking, when we're driving? That's not what he's trying to say. Be in a prayerful mood, a prayerful attitude. We hadn't been converted very long, and I had to go to Camp Dawson, and Cindy was with me, and, and we stopped at McDonald's. It's already at, it's already at uh, Elview at and we, we order our food. And we always, we, one thing we try to do is have prayer before we eat. And, and we get in the car and I'm, or the truck and I'm driving. She's over there. And, Man, I've got, my, I've got my hamburger. Now what do I do? I said, Cindy, you pray. How about that? You see, we're not supposed to forget God. Now, if you do, it's okay to say prayer later. Come on. Come on. But we need to give him thanks. We've got to exercise ourselves, catch the word exercise, in the repetition of spiritual activity. People will say, that's boring. People say, how can I go to church? Not, not this church, but I had a, had a friend of mine say, I don't, I don't like that preacher. I don't like that church. It's boring. I said, what do you mean it's boring? Wait, he, he talks too fast. I don't understand everything he says. He goes too long, all the, all the reasons. I said, have you con ever considered it might be you? Well, that's the wrong thing to say. I should use more time, but it's just the way I felt. You see, most of the time, if not all the time, when we have those feelings, that's Satan easing his way in, just like we talked about on prayer, that's coming back and disturbing our exercise, our exercise, so that we don't give everything to God. I did a message I guess at ranchers, how, how we need to do those kind of things. But just like sometimes when it rained, the folks wouldn't go, the real, the real exercise people run the rain. I thought that was pretty dumb too. But you see, we don't get a rainy day. 
preacher may call a, a, an hour delay because of church, or maybe not have Sunday school, may have to postpone because of snow. But that doesn't mean that God has gone anywhere. We can worship him at home. We can read our Bible at home. And, and thank God for the, for, the, for the electronic way. But that is not to long-term replace the church service of the faithful saints. I thank God for the people that are, that are homebound, that, that can't get out, that they have that, that means. Physical exercise is also born, I think, no doubt it's good for the body. Spiritual exercise may be boring to some, but it's good for the soul. And then resistance. To exercise, there's got to be some kind of resistance. No. I got on one of those machines one time. One time. You ever see those machines? I'm not smart enough to understand the instructions. You've got to strap your legs in. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And, and you've got to do all this other stuff and everything. And it's a good grief. And I said, well, why am I doing all this? Well, and then you put these little things on it for weight. And so it gives you resistance. I said, just me getting on here is enough resistance for me. But then they went on to explain some master fitness training. Went on to explain that with resistance, our muscles tone better and do better. And that makes our muscles, muscles stronger and tweak better and do better. Now, I don't know a thing about what I'm telling you, but that's what I was told. The same way with things of God. Everything is not going to be easy for you and me. It's not going to be easy for the church. It's not going to be easy with your devotions. It's not going to be easy, easy with your family. And i got to tell you something. I know y'all might be surprised. My wife's not perfect. I have some problems with her. But you know what? She's got some problems with me too. And my problems are probably bigger than hers. You with me? Everything's not going to be perfect in life. But we cling to God and the things of God. And by being strong and having done these repetitions in life, when those little things come about, or sometimes they're big things. My kids, my kids aren't like your kids. My kids do a lot, a lot of bad things. None of y'all's kids have ever done that. Okay? I'm kidding. Repetition and, and, and resistance. Have you ever tried to exercise with no resistance? Can you build muscles? I did this a while ago. Man, I wish I could. I do this all day long. Can you build muscles doing that? Not really. Not really. When I had my rotator cuff surgery, they told me to, 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 do, to do this and start off with a can of beans, a can of corn, a can of stuff like this. And I said, why am I doing that? That's to build strength back. I said, why don't I just do it? I did. I said, why don't I just do it without? I said, they don't build any strength. It just, just helps you a little bit. So we've got to have the resistance. We've got to have, have the thing. And we need to exercise, to exercise our minds. Do you get a good cardio workout by sitting on the couch? Whew. Well, that was aimed right at me. I like sports. The, the other day, about two weeks ago, they were having the, the NFL playoffs. And some of the teams I wanted to win won, but most of them didn't. But they were such good, such close games. I spent all Sunday afternoon and Saturday, because it was on Saturday and Sunday, watching football. I got up off the couch and I was as stiff. I could barely make it. I said, Cindy, can we move the couch closer to the bathroom? See, that's not exercise to get out and do something. The same way with, with, with serving God. It's not always easy. Sometimes you're not going to feel good. Sometimes there's going to be something pressing on our mind. The astronauts that spend experience, extended periods of time and space, they get mess, messed up because there's no resistance to it. Exercise demands resistance. Spiritual exercise demands resistance too. This is what Corinthians says, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what ye are able. But with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Ephesians six thirteen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles, I'm sorry, in the evil day, and having done all to stand. We've got to resist Satan. We need to be careful not give Satan credit. First Peter 5, 8, we read, Be sober, be, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, the adversary is our enemy. He's our enemy. Some people paint him this, this cute little thing with, with a pitchfork and a little red cape or black cape or something. That's not who Satan is. He's our enemy. As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom he, 
who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Satan wants nothing better than to overtake one of the believers. For when he does, not only does he take you down, but those people that are looking at you, those people that are looking at the church, it hurts them also. We've got to be, be strong in Jesus. James also tells regarding saying, resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4, 7. We've got to be resistant against persecution. Matthew 5, 11, 12 says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. I can tell you, I, I don't like people being mean to me. I don't like people being mean, mean to my family. I don't like people being mean to you. You say something about, about our church, and I get real, real anxious. Say something about our pastor, and I get real anxious. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a place for that. Because if we would take all those bad things we want to say and turn them into good things, we'd all be better. 1 Peter 4, 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resisteth, resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on our part Christ is glorified. So to exercise in godliness, we have to resist that which is evil, cling to the good. We've got to resist to grow stronger. We've got to be resolved. This is the last one. In order for ourselves to be good, we've got to be resolved to do it. A lot of people begin, but we won't stick to it. Exercise will do us no long-term good. Got to stick to it. I ran a little bit. didn't do me any good. After about two months of not running, I just back that freaking Cokes again. Got to stick to it. If you want to run further, you've got to stick to it. You want to go stronger in Christ, you've got to stick to it. You want to pray better, you've got to stick to it. You want to be better with God's people, you've got to stick to it. You want to tell people about Jesus, stick to it. The first time you talk to somebody, and, and most of you all know this, Satan will come to you as soon as you get away. Well, you should have said this and you should have said that. If you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, and I do, the Holy Spirit will take care of it if we go in the power and might of the Holy Ghost. We do well to begin. But if it don't stick, exercise does no good in the long run. We've got to be resolved to exercise, not just for the moment, but for our lives. When we accepted Jesus, and I share my life with you, I was purposed that I'd do everything I could. I listened to people I studied. And there's a song that I love it's called I Come Too Far to Turn Back or to Look Back Now. I've come too far. I love Jesus. Haven't you? Haven't you come too far? What concern me? Not y'all. I'm trying to build us up with the message night. Those folks that, that haven't exercised, that aren't exercising today, that's not coming out, not coming about, not praying, not doing the things they ought to do. And I'm not calling anybody by my name. I don't know who they are. I'm not judging anybody. They, they're not exercising. When you stop exercising, you no longer get the benefits. It's an ongoing thing. Spiritually, you and I got to be committed to the long term. My mom used to tell me, I hope I say this right, I could really get it messed up, that the gateway of, to hell is paved with good intentions. The gateway to hell is paved with good intentions. And if we understand the depth, and I didn't when she told me, I was just young. I had no idea until maybe 10 years ago what that meant. A lot of people say, I'm going to do this. I'll start tomorrow. I'll start next Sunday. I'll pray for you. You know, when we go over our prayer list, people have given us enough respect to want us to pray for their family, for their loved ones. We've got to do more than, than just start out or, or have good intentions and everything. According to Luke 9, 62, we can't afford to look back. Jesus said to them, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If I were going to preach on backslide, I'd say that's a great verse to prove to you that you can deliberately turn from God and backslide. But I won't say that tonight. Oh, I did, didn't I? Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. What does it say? The just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back, what does it say? My soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, we've got to keep on going. I didn't mean to holler. 
We've got to keep on going. We need to be steadfast and constant. First Corinthians says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We've got to preserve to exercise spiritually. Let me, let me close. I asked the question. I asked this question to me when I started on this. And the way I had it written, am I exercising myself in godliness? And, and when I began to think about that, maybe not as much as I ought to. I'm a pastor. I make all kinds of mistakes. I don't always spend the time I ought to spend. Got to work on it. Got to keep on going. That's the reason you exercise. So you can do better tomorrow than you did today. Amen? It's the reason that you do that. If we want to properly grow, then we will properly exercise. Physical exercise is good for the body and little profit because as pastor said this morning, one day our body will die. Spiritual exercise is what we need to care about. Spiritual exercise profits in all areas of our lives and for all eternity. For all eternity. Why do we need to? And what do we need to do? We need to be ready, number one. Number two, we need to do the repetitions. Number three, the resistance training. And then four, the resolve to stay the course. I want to stay the course, don't you? I want to serve Jesus. But I want, I want my friends, I want the folks, and not, not just our church, but all the churches and all those. I want those that, 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 that weren't sound enough to, to keep on keeping on through COVID and all the other things. I want them to get strong in the faith. I want them to grow. And we're the ones that can make that happen. They're not going to do it on their own. We've got to tell them about Jesus. We've got to point Jesus to them. We've got to pray for them. Love the Lord tonight. And I just pray that, that through a little bit of fun, I really didn't exercise much. I really despised every moment of it. I absolutely did. But I love doing things for God. There's just a, a special, and when I use the word reward, not like the rewards you get in the military, the rewards that man puts on you. There's just something special about knowing you're in God's will, doing the things that he would have you to do. Father God, we, we love you. God, I thank you for your word. Lord, we used a lot of scripture, but God, just to back up how important it is for us to be strong. Strong in you. Strong in your word. Strong in our prayer. Strong in our witness. Strong in our church. God, we, we trust you. We believe you. But, but we know that, that we're part of the solution to folks not being as strong as they once were. We just need to, we need to keep on going on. We need not to just banner about them and beat them up all the time. We need to pray for them and show them God's love. So God, I pray a mighty, mighty stirring of the, of the souls of the men and women that once we're in church that aren't now, that may get back, they get back where they ought to be. And God, for those that don't know Jesus at all, pray God that, that there'd be a great revival. And those of us that are, that are working, that are exercising in the faith, that God will be strong, will be able to tell them how to grow, that someday they'll be where we are doing the things that we're doing, encouraging others, exercising to win people to you. God, I, I love our church, and God, I'm just so thankful that you allowed Cindy and me to come here. Thank God through the awesome power of your spirit that you guided us this way. For the love of our family and friends here, Lord, and for the friendship they've shown. So God, I just pray that we would exercise properly and fitly to glorify your name, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and thank you so much.